What's up guys, it is Chris back with another watch video. Today I'm doing third installment of State of the Collection. Uh, please don't forget to hit that like button if you like these videos. And don't forget to, uh, of course, subscribe to the channel. It is very helpful and much appreciated. I'm going to start with a pocket watch on this third installment. And this is an Elgin pocket watch. Watch, excuse me. Uh, and it is a really old one, and I have it all opened up here so you can see the case back. It is a key wound pocket watch, uh, Fusi movement. So these are very old, they're very, very thick. There's some hand engraving, uh, and it says Elgin International Watch Co., and then there's uh, some numbering there. Uh, very, very cool watch, some blued screws, uh, very beautiful and still working as you can see. Uh, it doesn't tell perfect time, but it is uh, a silver uh, nickel, I believe, watch probably. I don't think this is solid silver. And you have a uh, plexiglass um, uh, uh, glass here and then uh, some blued hands uh, with the running second hand here at 6 o'clock. Just a beautiful watch. Uh, I think it was actually uh, very heavily polished uh, after I got it. Uh, and again, this is something that I got from an estate sale. It was a really, really good price and it was working. So I definitely thought it was pretty cool. And then another really cool watch that I want to set, show it's more of a clock. This is my Elgin, and then you can see a theme, I have a thing for them. Eight day power reserve flight clock. So this was in a uh, in a, an airplane. Uh, I don't know uh, exactly when these were, and if there is somebody who knows anything about these, um, I would be very, very interested in knowing. Uh, the person I actually bought this from, I bought this off of eBay, and uh, the the person I bought this from took a shell. So this is a, and you can see it says, um, I think this 90 millimeters right there, M19. So this is an actual shell, brass, as you can see. And uh, they took it, they took some brass screws, they cut a hole, they put the uh, the 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 watch inside that uh, little uh, hole there, and, and now there you go. You have a pretty cool uh, wall, uh, desk clock, and that's, you basically see these in all my videos, this in my, all my videos, because I keep it on my desk, and I just leave it right there. It's super heavy. So getting into the watches, uh, we have the IWC up next here. Uh, this is the only IWC that I own. It's kind of crazy because I really love the brand, actually. This is the Ingenieur, one of my favorite watches out of my whole entire collection. Um, definitely a really cool watch. Gerald Genta inspired, technically, I guess. Uh, Gerald Genta originally um, uh, designed the original IWC Ingenieur, and this is a, uh, you know, descendant of that watch. Obviously, I have the AP Diver here. Very similar looking case, uh, definitely also because that was uh, designed by the same designer, Gerald Genta. And then we have the Overseas, which has another case that's very, very similar, also inspired by these other two watches. Not designed by Gerald Genta, but I think um, uh, a different designer, and uh, the name escapes me right now, uh, Jorg Heisek, I think it was. And, um, you know... Really, really cool. These two from the Holy Trinity, but this is an IWC, and it doesn't really get a lot of love, uh, even though it is a General Genta inspired, you know, design inspired case. I think it's just an absolutely awesome watch. Uh, that textured dial looks absolutely fantastic. You have applied indices, really very similar hands to the AP. Definitely IWC taking some of its cues from AP. Uh, when they updated these watches uh, to uh, this case shape. IWC no longer makes these watches uh, with the Gerald Genta uh, cases. Uh, it's a big watch, 46 millimeters. This is the uh, Mission Earth, but it fits really, really well. A lot of a lot of like cool details, that those red details on the dial, tip of the second hand, which is an arrow, um, and then uh, little uh, red uh, numbers on the chapter ring. Flat sapphire crystal, a lot of different um, finishes on the case, screwing case back, screwing crown. I think it's only water resistant to 100 meters, but it's definitely a really awesome sports watch. 
Very, very capable sports watch. I highly recommend these watches. They are they are at a steal. They, you can get these for such a good price, and it's crazy. I don't know why uh, they don't get a little bit more love, as much love as the as AP gets, but kind of crazy. Uh, another bargain, absolute bargain watch, is Ralph Lauren. These watches, again, uh, really aren't liked at all. I don't think uh, I've ever seen uh, uh, any love for these on Instagram or anywhere else. Uh, I guess that makes sense. They are a fashion brand, and they're making high horology watches. This is a, a JLC movement with a column wheel chronograph in it. Uh, beautiful white dial with very contrasting black indices, black hands, uh, mirror finished on those black hands. So it's not polished stainless steel. It is actually black. Uh, and uh, this is called the Sporting Chrono. Just a beautiful, beautiful watch. I have it on a Aaron Bespoke uh, aftermarket strap. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of this strap anymore, but uh, I think in general this watch is a really, really beautiful watch. It is big. This is, I think, a 45 millimeter watch, so it does take a large wrist. I have seven and a half inch wrist, not that large, but um, definitely a beautiful watch uh, in general. And the buckle is actually signed underneath, which says Ralph Lauren, and that was intentional. They did that on purpose. Uh, I forgot there was a reason why Ralph Lauren liked that. Uh, I think it looks really good, just uh, in general, uh, a beautiful watch made by Richemont. So they're they're you know plucking parts from the Richemont part bin, and uh, they definitely picked the right movement, I would say. Uh, so and these go for nothing on eBay, nothing. And right next to it, I have a watch with pretty much the same movement. And that is my JLC Navy Seals Chronograph GMT with day-night indicator, uh, running seconds at the 6 o'clock there, uh, 1,000 meter water-resistant compressor extreme. So uh, this is from the Master Compressor line. It is the Master Compressor Extreme. They no longer make these. Uh, ceramic bezel, which is etched and has uh, and the numbers across there. Some of the best bezel action from any watch that I own. Gray 5 hardened titanium. This is on the uh, NATO strap that is from JLC. You can see it's signed JLC. Uh, also titanium. Very thick watch. Not extremely thick, but, but pretty thick. Uh, I have my, oh, not mine, but on loan, uh, I have a, um, a uh, Zelos. Abyss, which is 20 millimeters thick. Uh, this is actually thinner than that. This is a thousand meters. That's 3,000 meters. Uh, but very, really, just a really, really cool watch. Uh, tested by Navy SEALs. I'm going to do a full review on this watch. I never did, and I probably should have by now. It is just one of my favorite watches, uh, and definitely a keeper in my collection that will never leave. Um, next, we have a pretty cool watch. Well, we have the the Seiko SKX, of course, uh, just a workhorse of a watch. This has actually been sitting outside my house for quite some time. I brought it in for this review. Uh, it has stopped moving. Uh, it has stopped. The movement has stopped. It's been through a lot. Uh, I don't know what is actually wrong with it. I'm going to open it up and see if there's something that uh, that went wrong. I cannot get it going again uh, just by uh, uh, moving the uh, the the crown around, but uh, we'll figure it out and we'll see what, what actually has happened. I don't think I've killed the SKX, but I might have. We will see. Uh, definitely an awesome watch, 42 millimeters, uh, mineral crystal, just all around a fantastic watch. Next, a watch that I absolutely love, but I might have to sell, is my Bulova uh, Lunar Pilot. And uh, this watch is just a really, really cool watch. It is one of the only quartz watches that I have in my collection. It is kind of large, 45 millimeters, I believe. Uh, it has a really cool box sapphire crystal on it. Uh, this Velcro strap fits really comfortably. The watch in general feels really comfortable on the wrist. It's not very expensive, stainless steel. I believe these are selling on eBay from anywhere from $250 to $300. Um, really cool pushers. Not an exact replica of the original watch that went to the moon. However, they, they took some liberties, made the case a little bit larger uh, 
a uh, very very cool watch uh, in general and I really love it um, and then we have this is the Casio world timer um, I think I already uh, showed this watch in the very beginning of my first video uh, Casio world timer nothing much more I can say about it uh, just a really cool $25 watch I bring this on vacation with me I've gotten uh, some scratches on the dial uh, I, I usually wear this um, on the uh, on the plastic glass. Excuse me. I usually wear this uh, on on uh, on vacation if I'm going to uh, someplace where I'm not sure if I'm going to be safe or uh, if um, if I am uh, if I'm doing some work. I usually wear something like this. It's a, it's a really great watch and it's very easy, obviously, to tell the time because it is analog, uh, digital. Excuse me. And then we have the Eterna 1948, very, very beautiful watch. Uh, I've had this watch for many years, got this for only $450 on eBay, in-house Eterna movement. You can see it from the back there, beautiful, beautiful movement. I have it on an aftermarket strap, just a really, really cool watch, dress watch, 42 millimeters. Eterna, another brand, does not get enough love. I think this probably retailed somewhere in the $5,000, $6,000 range, kind of crazy. Uh, but I paid $450 for it. So it is a GMT as well. Really, really beautiful watch. Manufacture in-house movement. Great history. Uh, I believe I've done a review on that. If I haven't, I will. Uh, it is just a very, very cool watch. And speaking of cool watches, we have the Giorgio Gali S1 by Timex. Um, this is just a, a really, really beautiful watch. Uh, really great price point. $450. Uh, a lot of people complain that it's expensive because it doesn't have a sapphire crystal. I think it's a really cool watch. It offers a lot of style for the money, and uh, you know you're getting a lot for for what you're what you're uh, what you're getting, and especially it's from a major brand like Timex. Uh, in general, a lot of style, a lot of substance for the money, in my opinion. Uh, and I really hope that Timex keep going in this direction uh, and keep making watches that look like this. And uh, I, just in general, I'm super satisfied with this watch. And it's, it's a keeper in my collection because I love it so much. Uh, now, uh, just for a finale, I'm just going to do a really quick um, loom shot with all of these watches. So like I said, I have another box of watches that I will definitely do another state of the collection. I think I'll probably just try and squeeze that into a single state of the collection. I have some more... Time, uh, excuse me, some more Timex, some more um, Seiko, and I have a few other Swiss watches. Uh, I have no German watches. I have just never uh, gotten into uh, German watches, and I definitely should because I really like a lot of German watches. Uh, and we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely uh, look at that in 2020. Uh, but uh, just a, quill, a really quick, like I said, loom shot with all of the watches here. Um, and I'll even throw in a watch that is not mine, and that is the Abyss. And I will shut off the lights, and let's see. Just a general loom shot, just to see how everything uh, looks. And uh, that is it. So there you have it. Uh, a lot of these are dress watches or semi-sport watches, and there's not a lot of loom. Um, but you're going to see, obviously, where most of that loom comes from. That's the Abyss. And the Zelos, they are Loom Monsters. Also, uh, we have our um, SBDC061, another very bright watch. Um, you know, watches that are kind of disappointing, of course, is Vacheron. Uh, you can see the two Vacherons up there. You almost cannot see them uh, because there is not a lot of Loom. Uh, then, uh, you know, Omega, where you would expect a lot of Loom on a watch like the, the uh, Seamaster... 600 here, the uh, Planet Ocean, not a ton, um, and then everything else, you know, uh, you know, generally okay loom. There's even loom on this uh, Timex. It is a dress watch, and you can see there, it is pretty nice. Um, anyway, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful, much appreciated, and thank you for logging on. Please add comments below about this collection. Tell me what you think. Uh, it goes back to the bank, so I need to uh, uh, you know, pick out the ones that I'm going to be wearing over the next few months. So uh, anyway, thanks for logging on.